I refuse to be on the part to give me. Um, what I talked about last week was about working hard, right? Hard work. And where we left off was right here, Proverbs 37 through 9. Oh God, I beg two favors for you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, Who is the Lord? If I am too poor, I may still and thus insult God's holy name. With the basis of that being, don't let me be poor, and don't let me be rich. Has anyone ever had that thought, said that prayer? God, don't let me be in poverty. God, don't let me be rich. Let me be content with what I got. Let me have just enough. Like, can we, let me bring this down to a level I remember. Let's, let's picture Christmas, right? Be like, Mom, give me just enough presents that I can say I had a Christmas. But don't give me so many people think I'm spoiled. Has anyone ever said that to your parents? I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop raising my hand. Do what? Oh uh, yeah, see? That's how I always was. And I will stop raising my hands because I'm pretty sure I got some good things going on. Man, it's high. It's very high. Uh, but yes. The, the point of it is, first of all, if you don't have any money at all, you're tempted to steal. Like, let's say, say you're starving, or you had kids and they were starving. You would be tempted to steal, and uh, that's not good. Stealing is a sin. You know what you mean in that predicament. That's, that's why we work. But the point of not being rich, that's when we get into a little thing here in America called, we think we're God. And that's a little, yesterday, I spent about an hour watching rants from uh, atheists on YouTube because I find them funny. I like, I like to listen to them and just go crazy about all this stuff as if they offend me, and they don't. But the thing is, our society now wants everyone to think there's no God, that your brain controls everything that has to do with God, and therefore you basically are your own God. And the thing that makes that so easy to do is when you provide for yourself. When you can have everything you want and everything's easy, it's real easy to say you accomplish something. But at the end of the day, it is God who provides for us. It is God who allows us to walk, who allows us to breathe. And, and around the world, there's a whole different concept of that because they do struggle to eat. Here in America, we don't struggle to eat. Like, I eat eight meals a day. I know that sounds like a lot. Maybe, maybe some people's not, I assume. I okay, I'm assuming on the like dinner scale in this room, I'm probably at the top of like how many people eat more than one dinner a night? I'm not talking about snacks, I'm talking about full dinners. You two. Okay, five people are eating here eat two full dinners every night. So top of that. Now think if you were in another country, some people don't even eat every day. Like That's right. so you see, so the point being, if I were rich, I might think that I'm rich because I accomplished that. I did that. And which would make me more apt to keep it because I think I deserve it. And the Bible calls us to be givers. As Christians, we are supposed to give and be happy about it. Uh, there's people that are in need. And if we have extra, we're supposed to just give and be happy about it. And uh, if you have 100 bucks and you can't give 10 bucks, if you have a million bucks, you probably can't give 100,000. So. That's kind of the basis of that. Let's see here. I need to get like a cordless or like a lapel mic or something. This is kind of weird. I'm not real good. Giving is motivated by grace. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 through 4. Now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches of Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles and they are very poor, but they are also filled with abundant joy which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they, not, uh, and they did, sorry, they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing, and they give for the believers in Jerusalem. Now last week I mentioned how much gas was. Four dollars a gallon, right? So I'm going to use that, or it was like last week. I'm going to use that as a comparison for what this is about. Let's say gas is $4 a gallon. 
and you got a 25 gallon gas tank. So that means to fill your car up, it's $100. The Macedonians are extremely poor. So now let's say they have $100 and that's it. Okay? Let's just use this for example. Well, they heard somebody else needed, so they get one they can afford. So let's say they got their self five gallons of gas, say 20 bucks, and then they found the people, other people in need, and then use the other idiot put their gas tank. Could you imagine that? I'm sure everyone's got a parent in here that when you have $4 a gallon for gas, they let you know about it when you need to drive you to the mall or to uh, McDonald's or whatever. Or if you drive yourself, you probably noticed that hit. I want to get gas for my lawnmower, okay? Two years ago, I spent $10 on gas in the last two years. I got five, uh, $10 on gas the other day, and it was like none, like no gas at all. It's crazy. So could you imagine filling up your gas tank and using the rest of your money to fill somebody else's up that needed it because they couldn't get out because it was so expensive? Nuts, right? Seems crazy to think about it. But that's what it's about, giving. Giving. Running on empty, if you're ever feeling empty inside, that's what this is about. If you ever feel like life's getting overwhelming, like everything's piling up on you, part one's about work, and I'll just refresh a little on that proper mindset of working, because you have to do it, be happy about it. Work your hardest, work as if you're working for the Lord. Pray for God to give you the right concepts, the right mindset of work. To do your best, like, that makes you more filled up. That gives you more energy back. Giving does too. When you feel like you don't have enough money for stuff, and everybody's been there. Like, everybody went like, times in their lives where you feel broke, and then you know, times in your life where you feel like you got some money. And it's just, it's like back and forth, back and forth. Trust me, right now I'm in the, the second, okay? Man, I gave birth to a magician. Came, got here, he made my money disappear. So, I know what it's like to start feeling a little stressed out and bill, 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 bill. The hospital comes through and takes like all your cash. Like, the reality is it don't matter how much money you got or how much money you don't have. The key, one of the biggest keys to Christianity, period, is being given and being a servant. And the uh, Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 34, wherever your treasure is, there are the desires of your heart will be also. Which basically means, wherever your money goes, is where your heart's at. If your money, let's use me, we showed uh, Fat Dustin pictures a while ago. It's me in 2004 as an alcoholic. I was about to lose my apartment. You know why? Spend it all at the bar. Because my heart was on party. And that's what I loved, and that's what I did. I took all my money and women. There's some guys, in here, they probably spent a lot of cash on video games, right? Some girls in here, I don't know what girls like. Okay, you can ask my wife. I assume you spend all your money on chapstick and glitter, cupcakes, money dresses. These are the shows on TV I see the girls watch. So these are the assumptions I make. So, I apologize. My knowledge isn't very good. So wherever your heart is, wherever your money is, is where your heart is. If you love people, let me just break this down. If you're a Christian, you love people. Okay? There's no advantage but about it. The Holy Spirit calls us to love people. We feel a desire to help people. And we're not selfish and all about ourselves. Because that was what, how we were before Christ. We were selfish. So if you love people, then you obviously are a giving person. See how it all kind of adds up together? They go hand in hand. Because see, I was selfish, and I loved partying, and I loved having fun and making myself happy, and I never did. Then I got Christ, and I became loving, and now I love people, and now I give all the time. To where Amanda's like, hey, dude, we don't have any money. You're going to have to relax for a second. So here's where I'm about to close. 1 Corinthians 3.13. Kind of ties the two together. But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. And that's really what our life is. What kind of value does your life have? If you, this is, this topic, everyone's felt this way. They felt on empty. 
like they had nothing left to give. Like they're broke, you have no energy, you're tired, you just want to curl up in bed and lay there and pretend like nothing's happening. Like the world can just go on without you. School, work, family, whatever it is. But on Judgment Day, the value of our life will be shown what we did with it. How hard did we work? How hard did we work to spread the gospel? Twelve men spread that thing so far that in America we have we have 400 churches in Evansville. Okay, this starts Jesus, 12 disciples. The 12 disciples spread country, 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 and this city gets here. So much that this city has 400 Christian churches. Nuts, right? On Judgment Day, when the light, the value of the light is shown. That part will show, hey, this is what I do the rest of my life once I'm in Christ. I told about Jesus, I spread the gospel, I fed the hungry, I prayed with the sick and they were healed. Like, and there's gonna be plenty of people that come up in there, into heaven, and they're like, what's the value of your life? Well, I went to church sometimes, I read my Bible sometimes. Like, what else? Um, I saw every episode of American Idol. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> The value of our life on Judgment Day will be shown. And like last week, I'm kind of just going to open the altar up for prayer because this subject is one of self-improvement. If you hate work, okay, let's start from the beginning. If you hate work, that needs improvement. If you are at school or at work and you're always in arguments with people or people are always making you really mad and chew them out, that needs improvement. If you are not got a servant's attitude, which is you put others before yourself, that needs improvement. If every dollar you get, you cling to, as if it's the last one you'll ever see, that needs improvement. The thing is, as Christians, the Holy Spirit helps lead us, the, lead us the right way, and that's why when, uh, like, when we go to a convention, they do this Be the Light pledge, uh, and they show these kids in other countries starving or sick. That's why your heart hurts, and that's why you write down big amounts of money that you want to give. Because you want to help them. You really do. Deep in your heart, you don't want them to be hungry. You don't want them to be sick. And they're orphans. They don't have parents. Like, you want to help them, right? So you write big. And that's kind of what the Holy Spirit does. That leads you in the right direction. But later down the road, when it's not up in your face, and you've had more, you're back to reality of your friends and school and stuff you like, and you want to go to the mall, a sick kid don't really matter anymore because you don't see the picture anymore. Six months goes by, you don't even think about it, you don't even remember you pledge. Like, so the thing is, when I say we need improvement is, if you have Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is leading you the right way, it is convicting you correctly. But where the improvement is needed is the desire to want that feeling to set. The desire to ask God to keep reminding us of our faults, and how to fix them. Keep reminding us of his will for us and for us to do it. And so, somebody get these lights, put on low music, but open the altar. If anyone needs prayer, if you just want silent prayer for somebody, you can come on up here. And I hope this message doesn't come across aggressive, because it's not. I've been, my whole life, up until I became a Christian, I was the most selfish person there was. I, I only cared about myself, and I only cared if I were happy. And I'm not saying anyone's like me, but maybe somebody is. And maybe somebody's close. And at the end of the day, I hope everyone has the same goal at the end of this life and when we get to heaven, that the value of our life shows. And that God is proud of us. Because if we truly love him, we want him to be proud. So the altars are open.